when I get a request for a species that I don't know, then I go and research it. And I try to learn everything that's distinct about that particular species, because especially at the reptile show, people know their reptiles. In this adventure, I speak with Daryl and Michelle Maddox about their reptile art business, Art by Michelle. The discussion starts out slowly, but quickly you can see them get comfortable and we get into lots of details and even discuss their hopes for Art by Michelle. Buckle up, this adventure starts now. To the music! Adventures. I have Daryl and Michelle from Art by Michelle. I met them in uh, Michigan. Why, why don't you first introduce yourselves? I'm Daryl Maddox. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm Michelle Maddox. And okay. uh, we represent Art by Michelle. A few years back, she started um, painting uh, rocks and stuff as memorial stones for people's pets, uh, dogs and cats and stuff like that. And somewhere along the line, it morphed into reptiles and stuff like that, which at the time we had, I think, maybe one or two snakes, and that was it. It's just kind of ballooned from there. She's worked her way into clay sculptures and canvas paintings like you see behind us. Um, And then she just recently got me tied into doing some wood carving for her that she sculpt. uh, after I carve it, she does the detail work and the paint and everything on them. Wow, that's incredible. So how would you define yourselves? I'm I'm an artist, but I'm a stay at home mom. That's that was that's been like my main job for a while. I have four kids. Um and I um but now that my kids are older, I like to define myself as an artist and also a reptile lover. Actually I love all animals, mm-hmm. but um specifically reptiles. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would define myself as, uh, first and foremost, a child of God, then a father, a husband. Uh, I uh, am starting to get into the art stuff a little more. Uh, I've always been in construction and woodworking and stuff like that. So it just kind of goes hand in hand. Um, And we're looking to see where that kind of goes now see where that takes us so how long have you been doing this art i have always loved art ever since i was a child um i kind of got i did like all of the art contests you know that you do in elementary school and everything um and and i've always loved reptiles as well i was the kid that was running around catching reptiles snakes frogs whatever i lived in northern michigan you know as my kids started getting old enough to start wanting to do crafts and stuff like that I kind of joined in and then I kind of took my own path and started doing my own thing and um like he said earlier I was doing uh painting rocks I started uh doing that and then people saw it wanted it so then I started doing more of that and then I just started with the clay just because like I said I I love uh snakes so I thought I'd make a few for myself and then people saw them and liked them (laughs) Where do you want to go with this? Is this something that's going to want to be your full-time income? Is this something that's just a sidelight? Is it just something you're doing for fun? Or what is your goal? Ultimately, we would like to see it, you know, become a full-time thing. Um, Mm -hmm. I work quite a strenuous job, a lot of hours. So I don't get to spend much time with my wife and my kids. But the... uh, as we've trans started to transition into the carving now, if that, you know, with that and the clay and stuff like that, if this is something that we can make a full-time job, then that gives me an opportunity to work with my wife. You know, she's come to work with me a few times and we work along great. So I just figured it would be nice to, you know, just work together all the time. Yeah. I, I, I also, I would, I would love to be able to make a living at it. <laughs> um, art is fun. So <laughs> You say that you do construction or what what do you actually Uh, do? Yeah, I do construction. I've been um, doing construction since I was about 12 years old. My father owned his own business, Mm -hmm. worked a full-time job, and then had his own business. So when I would get off school, I'd go to work with him. And that was my time to hang out with my dad. Uh, And then it just became a full-time job as I got older. 
Uh, originally, I was going to go for auto body design and stuff like that. But after about a semester, I dropped out to go full time work. And uh, I've been doing that now for 31 years, 32 years, 33 years, somewhere around there. Um, and I flip homes now. I work for a guy. We uh, we do about 10 homes a year uh, in, in the metro Detroit area. Wow, that's the same kind of connection I had with my dad. I started at, I think, nine. Not that I'm uh, trying to uh, uh, be younger, but I was, but yeah, I didn't do much. I, I handed him tools. Yeah. I, you know, I, I took the knife to him or I had the hammer yeah. to him. And then eventually I was doing my own roofing jobs at 16 and, you know, and kept going. And, but um, I went off to a different uh, situation where I'm now actually a physician. So I had to go to all that school and what have you. But uh, every summer I'd come home and he'd remind me why I wanted to go into medicine and not uh, construction long term because <laughs> of the physicality of it at all. Yeah. But um, I, my dad was one of those guys who used to, who trained himself. And he actually built my siblings, my two brothers, a bunk bed. He didn't build them out of one by three. He built it out of six by six for the legs and two by eights for the beam. He could have driven a truck on top of that and it wouldn't have moved. And so that was what I was used to. And so I build my own cages and what have yeah. you, but I don't build them the way you would want to build cages. I do the same thing. Mm -hmm. And she complains about the same thing. They're always so heavy. Yeah, they're built. big. My dad was the same way. You know, he was like, we don't build, we don't remodel bathrooms. We build bomb shelters. This is what he used to joke around and say a lot of times. And so, yeah, it's, it's, yeah. And I, I learned how to do pretty much everything we had when growing up with my dad, we had uh, licensed electricians and all the different mechanical and all that, all those licensed people there. So some days I would shadow them and learn that trade too. Um, but I typically don't do most of that. Mainly I do trim work and doors and kitchens and baths and stuff like that. Well, that makes sense. I mean, I've seen your, that you're carving and, uh, she makes them very beautiful a, a, after you get them done, but you have to carve yeah. something out that's the right size and shape. And I yeah. even decided to, uh, get a jewelry box to put in my office uh, uh, because of the snake was so cool. And yeah. my wife and I bought a, uh, a snake that we hang on our, uh, our curtain rod. And so that it could just looks like there's a snake there. And, and actually my uh, daughter came in after not, you know, didn't see it, get it. And she said, Hey, we found your snake. I'm like, I know that is, that is, that is awesome. <laughs> yeah. We actually have some of the different stuff with us. Uh, some of the clay and uh, carving, yeah. one of the carvings with us. Okay. Well. Why, don't you show me, why don't you show us that? Um, okay, so this this is a wood carving of a, a it's a Burmese, mm -hmm. and um, so I don't know how how long is you. Would <laughs> it's see. about two and a half, three. It's about foot. two and a half, three feet long, and he uh, like he said, like we were saying, he so carved it all out. Yeah. What I did was I laminated some wood together, cut out the initial shape, then I carve it out to the body style um like some of the other ones we do are gaboon vipers they're more of a triangular shaped body and so then once i do that and carve out the the head shape then she comes along and she will do all the scale pattern on it she'll do the eyes to make them realistic um, and all the paint and everything like that that's one of the things that she's really focused on over the years is uh learning how to make things really hyper realistic so you can't really tell the difference between a sculpture and the real thing yes i i i've uh, been experienced and and when i was going around the michigan show i saw a bunch of people had your stuff and i was like hey that's that's almost lifelike that, michelle over there does those she's like yeah she did this one <laughs> and so it was, it was a common theme there so uh yeah when we first started doing the shows uh there was a couple of vendors that really supported us. Uh, Seth Hurst, he did. He's he's been a big supporter of ours. Uh, yeah, Seth did a podcast with me as well. So yeah. uh, he he built all my snake cages. So um, yeah. he's been a great supporter. So how did you get into vending them at a at a uh, reptile show? So I would say a couple of years, maybe three years, somewhere right around there before COVID. Mm -hmm. um, we somehow got connected. I don't even remember how, how we got connected, but we got connected with a guy that was ironically from her hometown, a uh, coin dealer and uh, a reptile breeder and, and vendor. 
and he started first buying the rocks from us. Um, she was painting like lizards and snakes and stuff like that on rocks. And he would buy them in kind of bulk from us. And then he would sell them at the shows. And that did pretty well. Um, we did pretty decent that way. You know, it was, it was a start though. It got our, our, her art out there. And then she started doing some more of the sculptures as she started transitioning into more sculptures. He bought a few of them and was selling them then as well. But then COVID hit um, about the same time he kind of got out of vending and changed his line of work. And so at that point we just made the decision, why don't we just get a show uh, our own table at the Taylor show? And uh, so February of this year, we got a table and uh, we haven't looked back since we've been doing pretty decent every month you know there's been some slow months and stuff like that uh but holidays you know people are doing stuff outside during the summer sure yeah summers are kind of slow times at reptile shows but yes but overall we've done pretty well yeah have you done any other shows or is that the only show you've been to we've done oh, um the that. jackson show jackson. twice um and i think we're going to do it again in the beginning of the year uh, mm -hmm. they're moving from jackson to Celine. And okay. so it's going to be um, a little closer to Ann Arbor. January 6th or something like that? Uh, it's usually the first weekend of yeah, the month. That's the, so yeah. I, if, yeah, if that's the date, I'm not for sure exactly. Yeah. And we, we, we are actually looking into doing other shows yeah. too. Um, the, Jack, Jackson just happened to be the, the next closest one. So we're, we're just trying to move into, you know, the closer ones and then see, kind of expand out from that. Ohio has several shows. If you look at the top quarter, um, the left hand upper side next to Michigan there. Um, so uh, there's a lot of shows you could get into. Some of them are a lot busier than others and some of them are harder to get into. But uh, I'm sure that your art would be uh, extremely uh, uh, valuable there and uh, liked by many. So Yeah, okay. we've we're looking into maybe doing a birch run or something mm -hmm. in Michigan as well. Like there's another uh, show in Grand Rapids that's supposed mm -hmm. to be a pretty big one. So we're looking into those and a couple in Ohio mm -hmm. that uh, we've had some some people show interest in us coming down there. Mm -hmm. um, earlier this year, we were invited to Animal Con um, mm -hmm. uh, by uh, Jay, uh, one of the people from uh, the Reptarium. Mm -hmm. Yes. But <clears throat> it was so close to when the sh uh, animal con was. And at the time there was a show that was supposed to be in Detroit that we had signed up for. And um, we just didn't think we were going to have enough time to have enough product between the two. So we, we didn't do it this year, but uh, they've asked us if we want to do it again this year and, uh, or this coming year in 2024. And uh, we're really looking into maybe going down there. Yeah. Hoping it works out that we can make it there. I was actually going to go down to Animal Con last year. Uh, Bill Strand, who's my co-host on the Wednesday um, live shows, is down there. Been down there the two years, and uh, he convinced me to go down there. But I had another project. I was actually importing some stuff that was coming in that weekend, and I couldn't make it. So, uh, oh. but no, that's that's a uh, it would have been awesome to go to uh, meet all those people that I that I only know so so well. But um, and I actually I went to the Reptarium after the show that I saw you guys at the last time. I went to the Reptire and we, it was an awesome phenomenon. It was uh, something we really enjoyed. And, uh, you know, so I'm definitely yeah. going to go back and I'm going to probably get uh, season passes and keep going to the Taylor show. But, um, but now we've got another show. So we'll have to figure out how that, uh, how that works into the whole thing. So I know there's only so many days in the, you know, in a month and only weekends that they have these things on. So yeah. of course I got a day job as well. So <laughs> how did you choose what to draw or to, um, I kind of cho chose in the very beginning when I started, I chose what to make according to what we had. Like I started kind of like with a ball, we had ball pyth two ball pythons. So I was like, oh, I'm going to you know, try to make a ball python. Mm -hmm. um, and then I, once I started, once people started having interest, then I would get uh, requests from people. And so then when I get a request for a species that I don't know, then I go and research it. And I try to um, learn everything that's distinct about that particular species, because especially at the reptile show, people know their reptiles. Yeah. So and I kind of I want to make sure that I'm doing them justice by, you know, doing all the research, even if there's just such 
just a tiny difference and from one species to another, I just want to make sure that I'm, you know, doing right by the customer and the reptile. So, but yeah, and I, I kind of have a favorite that I do right now, which is the Gaboon Viper. Mm -hmm. Um, in the beginning, it was very taxing with all the, you know, the different pattern, but, um, I, I really like the outcome of it. And, and I have a actual right here, I have a, a rhino viper, which is a lot like, you know, the Gaboon Viper species. Um, wow, and this is, cool. this one is out of clay, mm -hmm. um, but it has a lot of the same, uh, markings as the Gaboon Viper, only the head shape is slightly different. And then, you know, the, 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 the pattern on the head is, you know, but they're, they're kind of my favorites to do. So you haven't even seen many of these species that you that you're creating. Mm -hmm. I have not. Wow. Not in oh, not crazy. not in real crazy. life. Yeah, just you know that is crazy that you that you're able to create them so lifelike because I haven't seen many of them, but I've actually seen the gaboon vipers. Like I told you, I was in Pittsburgh or, or not? Uh, yeah, Pittsburgh, um, and they had the show, the mega show that there was a it was a a hot show, and so they had all those uh, venomous uh, snakes. So. Um, but, uh, yeah, those are, yours are very lifelike. And uh, so it's cool to see that. And that you didn't even, you haven't even seen them. That's amazing. She spends a lot of time pouring over pictures that she finds online mm -hmm. of each species. I, I would probably say thousands of pictures. She saves them. She screenshots them. Her phone is literally full of just pictures of reptiles and snakes, you know, and, and, because that's where she draws her inspiration kind of and 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 gets to see the finite details of them so that she can copy them okay do you guys have a storefront or or a way like an online way to get to you or to, to buy so, stuff or so we don't have a storefront as of right now that's something we're looking into um right now she has her uh facebook page art by michelle um and, and Instagram, and Instagram. I just, yeah, um, my Facebook page would be, uh, it's not usually stuff that I have on hand to sell because um, I kind of can't go fast enough to have, you know, a bunch of stuff on hand. It's kind of for reference as to past commissions and as to what I can do. So I, I do take, you know, um, commissions to my Facebook page. Um, and then I have my Instagram again, for the same reason. I just, right now it's just kind of like a lot of private commissions other than the shows, which are what I have on hand and what usually what I sell right in person. So these are one of a kind because you're not yes. mass producing them. Every single one is different. Yep. Every and, single one. Um, you know, they may be doing several Gaboon Vipers, but they're different. They're, they're all yeah. individual. So that is, that is incredible. That's uh so that I, I applaud you for doing that. And are you looking to do anything else? Um, any other type of art? Do you just like reptile art? Are you, do you do other stuff or will you just do anything anyone asks or? I kind of started out uh, a lot, doing a lot of uh, memorial stones for dogs and cats. Mm -hmm. um, I do that sometimes. It's not my most enjoyable thing. Sure. Um, uh but I, I do it. Um, and I do, I actually do draw like a lot of other animals. Um, one, the one thing I don't draw is people. <laughs> so if someone asked me to draw them, um, I don't know if it would come out the way that they would like it to come out. But with, as far as animals, um, I've drawn a lot of, you know, draw and, and acrylic painting. I really love acrylic painting as well on canvas. So I, I've done a lot of, uh, those as well what is your goal for this business? So you want to be, I would like to be able to pay the bills, <laughs> um, with it, but I would also like to eventually teach people how to do some of this stuff as well. Um, I, yeah, yeah, I would, I would love to be able to have a platform where I can kind of like show how I, how we do what we do and all the detail that goes in, because I do have sometimes um, people ask me, you know, what, it, what, what do you use? How do you get, you know, the scale texture? How do you get this? How do you do the eyes? Some things um, are tedious and take a long time, but some things uh, I use household items to get like some of the scale texture. So some of them, it's actually easier than people may think, you know? And so I think it would be a really cool thing at some point to be able to 
show people how I, you know, how I, how I get this so that they can actually try it themselves. Would that be like an Instagram or YouTube or a, a class that you have in person or? I was, I was thinking I would start out as like a YouTube thing. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've wanted to for so long, but then I just didn't, you know, and I, I still want to, and I'm hoping that I actually will soon, but I just didn't take the time to do it yet. Some of her posts that have done the best on like Facebook and stuff like that are the ones where she shows part of the sculpting process. Um, she just recently did two blue insularas and she was shaping the head. It was just gray clay and she just put it out there. This is my next project. You know what? what is it kind of question and and those ones seem to do the best on there honestly anything else that you want to do with this go around the country to different places mm -hmm. you know because of this to go and show yeah. off or, or not show off it but uh to show the artwork and to you know maybe no, you're showing it off it's great stuff don't don't yeah. undersell yourselves <laughs> great stuff show it off um you would be able to be at tinley and you could be at any, any of these other shows and sell the stuff there. People would, would love the stuff. And there are other people doing the same kind of stuff, but it's, yeah. but not exactly the same stuff. So um, yeah. that would, you'd be great. Um, yeah, that would, that would be fun. How does someone reach you if they need to get a hold of you to your email? Yeah, it's uh, yeah. through, I, through uh, either my email, my, um, my uh, art Facebook page or my Instagram. Okay. So what is your email? It is Michelle Maddox at gmail.com. And okay. that's I X at the end. A lot of sure. times people think it's O X. Because the people listen to this podcast, but they also view it. M most people actually see it as a video podcast, but a percentage of people are just listening to this as they're walking around doing their work during the day. Yeah. So what pets do you have now currently? So right now we have 11 snakes. Mm -hmm and a sulcata tortoise oh a sulcata tortoise that's like yes. a tank it's, it's still a baby. a baby yeah it's still a baby <laughs> it's actually our oldest daughter's yeah. um she lives with us while she's still going to college and she always wanted one so a couple months back she got one wow that's gonna grow up to be a big tank and it's gonna live forever yeah. have to give it to her grandchildren so your yes. grandchildren yeah. have it we but... always wanted one but because of how long they lived, you know, we're like, well, what if something happens to us, then we have to <laughs> hand it down, you know? And mm -hmm. so we just, that's why we never got one. And anything else? We like to, uh, with all of our snakes and stuff like mm -hmm. that, uh, I teach youth group at our, our local church. Okay. And, uh, so I like to take them in a lot of times. Sure. Uh, it's, it's, that's something that we kind of hold dears because like, a lot of people don't like snakes and a lot of people in churches especially don't like snakes because of the right. Adam and Eve story. Mm -hmm. And so I like to show them that, you know, it's another one of God's beautiful creations that, you know, they come in so many different colors and shapes and sizes and they're, you know, and we get actually a pretty good response. A lot of the people um, are standoffish at first, you know, and then we show them the cute ones we have, like the Sambo uh, and some of the ball pythons and stuff like that. And then they kind of get a little bit, you know, uh, more comfortable with them. And just, just like to educate people, you know. My wife and I used to say, if it was a snake, it would have bit you. But you know what? <laughs> We now say, if it was a snake, it would just looked at you and thought you were crazy because you couldn't see it. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. That's what they do. They don't, I mean, because we love snakes and yeah. that's great. No, that's really good. That's a, a good thing to do and a good way to, to uh, talk about all these things. You know, Bill and I, who's my uh, co-host on the uh, live show, we're all about getting people into understanding and learning about reptiles and yeah. knowing more about them so that people are able to spend some time with them and see what they're like and once you get into reptiles, you get into other things like we're into chameleons mostly. You get into that and then you get into creating a, a place for it to live and then you get into plants. Then you yeah. start to get into the country that they come from and yeah. the other animals that they come from and whether you put other animals with it or not, you're almost like above a zoo. Okay. Yeah. And in Michigan, we have a lot of freedom when it comes to reptiles and stuff like that, you know. Except for I heard Detroit is not that way. Yeah. Yeah, you know, we were signed up for that show in Detroit, and um, they ended up having to cancel it because they couldn't get enough people to sign up. Because in the city of Detroit, you can't own any reptiles. 
somebody said any turtle over four inches you can't own in Detroit. I don't know how true that aspect is, but it's a really old law. And so they couldn't get any vendors to sign up, even though they had it worked out with everybody, with the, the local law enforcement and everything. The vendors were afraid that they were going to lose their reptiles as they came into Detroit if they got pulled over or anything. Sure. And so they um, instead had to cancel it. Um, they said they're going to move it to the outside of the city. And uh, they refunded our money, which was awesome. And actually gave us, a, they offered us a free table since we stuck around with them all the way up until they had to cancel it right before the month before. That must have been a, a strange story. Do you know the story behind why the law came about? Or I'm not for sure. Um, I've heard it goes all the way back to the 30s, okay. 1930s something. Um, so is there an urban legend or something that people talk about in Michigan or Detroit? Or or? I'm not for sure. Uh, I know that something about in 2019 or something like that, they... Uh, rehashed the the fact that they wanted to make sure that it was being followed i know not too long ago there was a guy that his uh retic got out and it was on a garage and it was a giant one twenty two <laughs> foot long or something like that it was on the news yeah it was all over the news one one person with the retic and you can't have a turtle out of four inches <laughs> yeah really i mean i don't think he was i don't you know. think he was the one at fault for it but right. um there's a you know you see a lot of uh a lot of weird stuff in Detroit. Let's just, oh. <laughs> you know, and you can't sell a turtle smaller than four inches. So yeah. it's one of those, you just have to have it for like a week and then you have to give it up because it grew up, oh, grew your four inches. So yeah, that's crazy, <laughs> uh, crazy, strange, but yeah, there's all kinds of things. Yeah. Ohio is very much like that. Ohio has a lot of freedom and actually I don't think there's any cities in Ohio that are specifically against different things. Now Ohio has a, um, I think it's, 13 foot rule on snakes so if your snake is great longer than 13 feet tell the state that you have it but then you know i was talking to a vendor up in the michigan show as well he's like you know a battery tick and what have you he's like but how do you even measure those things it's like <laughs> you, yeah. you can't ever get a, that a 13 foot snake to sit still <laughs> so yeah. you can measure it so how do you figure out it's 13 <laughs> or 12 or 11 and a half or whatever it might be so yeah you'd have to have a whole crew to stretch it out and measure right. it and... <laughs> exactly. oh boy that that, that would be a strange and now ohio you can't keep hots correct i do not know i i'm not interested in keeping hots i i think they're beautiful but yeah. i'm not about to because being a physician i know that you know you what you have to have to have hots and you have to get the the antivenom and it only lasts like six months and it's very expensive and yeah. you have to have the right antivenom. It's not like you just have yeah. to have antivenom as a whole. You have yeah. to have the right snake's antivenom. I don't see the reason why. I mean, they're beautiful, but I, there's so many other animals on the planet that I think it's. Uh, I think I. I think I'd rather do others, but um, I don't actually know. Figure that out. See, now you got me on two adventures. You got me going all the way to Detroit to figure out what the heck happened over there and when it was and why. You know, I know what happened to re reinforce it. What what happened to cause that law? And now. Can we actually keep hot in Ohio? And I don't know. The only I've only been to one hot show it was the one in in Pittsburgh in uh, the mega show. Uh, yeah. That one three times a year, and it was cool and neat. But you know, I had enough time spending there looking at them there, and you know, I saw the cobras, I saw the gaboon vipers, and all the other stuff, and it was neat to see it. But they didn't, no desire to take it home. They weren't even expensive. They were a couple hundred bucks. Cobras were like one hundred and fifty dollars. It was like. <laughs> yeah. because you get the the antivenom is probably a thousand dollars or something yeah. like that and you have to replace it every three months so uh, so you have any final words for the adventures uh i would say uh you know uh look us up if you're into art and uh keep watching her she's gonna start doing some how-to videos and, hopefully yeah uh really soon here so uh maybe other people can learn how to uh to you know follow their passion and artwork as well and i just want to thank everyone who has supported me up yeah. to this far like i like we were saying there's so many people at the reptile show that when we first started so yeah. many vendors there that were supporting me and everyone online and you know people that i haven't met face to face even i just want to thank everyone in the reptile and the art community and i want to thank you for being here also i want to encourage you because the more you do this kind of thing the more you get comfortable with it, the more you just, it's natural. And so um, I've, you know, I've only been doing these podcasts for less than a year. I've been doing the live shows for a couple of years, but the more I do them, the more comfortable it gets.
I really appreciate you guys being here. If you enjoyed this adventure and want to be alerted when more are available, please click the subscribe and maybe even the bell button. Thank you.